let's use NetBeans to create a new project. So, file, new project, uh, let's make a Java project, Java application, next, and let's not go with the default name. How about if we call it uh, test? Test one. Now, where's it going to be saved? What's the name of the folder? All sounds good. So, uh, and create a main class. Sure, why not? Finish that. Okay. Let's close this. Okay. So we've got a package that we've created, and in this package, we have one class called main. Do what? Let's rename this. I'm going to right click on this, on main, highlight main, right click on it, refactor, and you can't see it, but at the very top of this, I've got rename. And when I click on that, I can change this, I can refactor this to be whatever I want. Um, let's call this class. Example one and refactor it. So everywhere it's got uh, had main now is example one. And you notice that if I go over here uh, under test, uh, I've got my dot Java file, which is now example one. Notice that the name of the dot Java file and the name of the class has to be the same. So, inside my package right now, I've only got one class. Let's see where the beginning and ending of this is. Let's put this over here. Okay. So, can you see where the beginning and ending of this class is? Beginning and end of the class. Okay. And this class is inside of this package called test1. So, this package right now just has one class. And inside of this one class, there is a main, which is where everything's going to start at. Again, let me put this on a new line. So here is where everything's going to start. Okay, I take the comments out of here. You should always have comments in your program. But for the sake of speed, I'm going to leave those out for now. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and try try this out. Just it's always good to try these out. Okay, go ahead and save this, and then let's run this file. And in the output screen, it looks like it might run, and it does. Okay, so that runs okay. Okay, so let's add a second class to this. So I've got my test package, and in my test package, what I want to do is I want to add a new Java class. And in this case, let's call it uh, test class one. It's in our test one package. And let's finish with that. Okay, so we've got our inside of our package test one. We've got our new class, and again, I always like to put this on a new line. I think it's easier to see this way. And I've got some code I'm going to put in here. So, and let's 
dress it up just a bit. Okay. Now, notice that nothing in this is static, so it means I will need to create an object out of this to make this run. So, let's do that. We've got, under our package test one, we've got a class called test class one. So, let's make an object. Okay, got our hello world, so let's try this out. Let's do So first, let's go in and put in some values for test one, test two, and test three. You notice these are public, which is a little unusual for uh, uh, class variables, but in this case we're just doing it as an example. So we've set test 1 is 10, test 2 is 20, test 3 is 30. Okay, so let's go back here and what we'll do is here we uh, will just output hello world or hi world and then uh, system.out.println the value of test 1 equals and then we have the name of this object which is standard is the name of the object, the name of the class is test class, and we create a new object uh, using the constructor test class, which is automatically created for us. We go in here and we create a new object out of this. Okay, now. Now that we've got that object named standard, and what standard does is it it doesn't hold the class. It doesn't. It is not an object, and standard is really not an object in itself. What it is is it's a value. It's a type. It's a type of test class, and what it does is it points in the computer's memory to this new uh, this new object. This new object that's been created. So in the computer's memory, it has created an object out of test class and placed it somewhere in the computer's memory. And what STD does is it goes in and points in the computer's memory to where this is located. And where it's located at, well, that's where all of these things have been created. Okay. Uh, can we run this? Right click, run file, and it says hi world, and the value of test one is 10. Let's go check that out. So the value of test one, yeah, that's right, is 10. Now, can we, so there, we have a data value, and it was public, so we could use this SDD. Now, having it public is pretty dangerous because it means you can refer directly to uh, this value, which is pretty dangerous in a class. You don't want uh, uh, other programmers going in and changing these values and messing with these values, and, and you don't want to have to publish what these values are. So what you, you, what you normally do is you provide getters and setters to change these. And that way you can obfuscate uh, these values and, and hide them from the programmers. So programmers don't really need to know what's going on internally in here. They just need access to, say, some of the classes and occasionally, although rarely, to some of the variables.
that are in here. Oh, this is doubled, so I should have probably made these double, huh? Instead of integers. But uh, it will imply that these are doubles. Okay. Okay. Uh, so what are we going to do now? Well, let's say, how about if we say the average, oops. This case, so we're going to say the average is, and we're going to refer this object, which is std dot, and it should give us uh, all of the inherited and the. Uh, you notice these are public, so these are available to us. But we've also got get average, which is a method which is includes get average. And what it will return is test one plus test two plus test three divided by three. Okay, let's see if that works. Save this, run this, run the file, and it inputs, it outputs uh, high world, which we've got right here. Uh, the next thing it does is it outputs. Uh, the value of test one, which we've already seen, and now it goes in and it runs our a uh, our average, which is the method that we've got in here called get average, and it adds those together, divides by three. These are sixty divided by three should be twenty, and that's what we got. Okay, so it looks like that's working. Okay, let's stop right here.